There you go. Um, the next step I do is I've got a little puddle of Zappa Gap glue, and this is really going to give it its shape for me to really easily, because we want we want it to be kind of like this when we epoxy it. I'm just going to get the end of this little needle that I'm using. It's called a darning needle, and I'm going to just get it on the inside of this tinsel and just get that tinsel wet with that zappa gap and then I'm going to press it into the polar fiber and down the shank of the hook and it's glued holds that in place that's what the uh, the polar fiber There you go. You can see. You can see now. It's got that narrow profile and those um, tinsel stay, staying in place. Next up is to put on the eyes. Now I use these 3D eyes. These plastic 3D eyes. Um, the hardest part about this is that they're so small that these are like. Orvis Jurassic eyes, I think. I think I like the ones with the silver irises better than these. I think I have green ones. But I just put a tiny amount of Zappa Gap on one side and then I place it on the hook. But you can see I put the eye, I didn't put the eye like on the middle, you know, with the hook shank down the middle of, of the eye. I, I glued it at the bottom of the eye because I want all the epoxy to be up here and we want as much uh, space right here in the gate as possible once the epoxy is put on. So I'm going to grab another eye. Put one on my side. A little bit of Zappa Gap. Tiny little dot on the 3D eye. And push, hold that sucker on. Um, kind of make some adjustments here. The reason I use Zappa Gap is that um, once, and I'm going to whip finish this off because now it's time to, we're going to mix our epoxy and make the body. Um, the reason I use Zappa Gap is so that if I just use the adhesive that was on these eyes, on the back of these sticker eyes, they would slide around and stuff when the epoxy dries. So, um, what I use is, I'll zoom out a little, uh, DevCon, um, See, DevCon two hour clear weld epoxy. It's uh, got a lot of working time. Um, five minute epoxy will turn yellow after a year and it also breaks real easy. But the best thing about this stuff is that you can, uh, and I just take some aluminum foil and make a little cup like this and I squeeze both parts of it into my little aluminum foil cup. And, uh, and mix it really thoroughly. But like I said, the um, coolest thing about two hour clear epoxy is that 
you don't have to rush to get everything done on the fly. So I'm going to stir this for, I like to stir it for about 10 minutes. I go about 10 times one way and then 10 times the other way. And I might edit this out, but it'll get cloudy and then it'll clear up. Um, yeah, working with epoxy is something that kind of takes some practice. And if you're using two hour epoxy, you'll also need a fly turner, which I have. And um, if you're tying saltwater flies, I hi highly recommend getting one. It uh, really makes the flies turn out perfectly with the just totally symmetrical. And that's what, you know, putting the, that zap gap down the side, it really held all the material, you know, just straight down the back of the hook so that, so that everything would turn out right. Okay, and you can tie these um, kind of assembly line style. You can tie them up to this point and then set them aside and then tie like five of them and then do it in a batch of epoxy and do like five at once, you know, you can put the five, um, put epoxy on five of them and uh, really speed things up that way. So I'm still mixing. Pretty anal about my epoxy mixing because if you don't mix it enough, it'll only set partially and you have a fly that's sticky and stays sticky forever.